In this module, we're going to derive the IS curve. So let's start on the bottom here. We have the goods market, or what in macro we call the AE model. And we know that AE consists of C plus I plus G plus NX. And once you add all those up, you get that upward sloping supply, upward sloping aggregate expenditure curve. And that might look like this. And then we'll call that AE1. And then in wherever that crosses over the 45 degree line, that's going to be equilibrium GDP for this economy. So here, this economy is going to settle in on Y1, and I'm going to just make a note here that that's Y1. You'll note here we have AE and we have Y equals GDP, or GDP on this axis. And then for the ISLM model, here we're deriving the IS curve, we have interest rates on this axis and Y equals GDP on this axis. Now remember that AE AE equals C plus I plus G plus NX, and just to keep things simple, we're going to hold everything constant except for this investment part, and investment is driven by interest rates, so that's what causes changes here. So let's assume that if interest rates, if I equals 10%, then this is true. Investment is so high, or high enough that we get this AE curve, so we can pick a point up here and call that 10%, and then we can say, well, 10%, Investment will be such that AE equals AE1, and then that's our intersection, so we get Y1, and then we get this point right there. That, we know, is on the IS curve. If interest rates are 10%, that point's on that curve. Let's change that and say perhaps interest rates have now fallen, and we can move interest rates, which had a different color. We can move interest rates if interest rates equal 5%. What happens? Well, if interest rates go down, we know that investment goes up. So investment goes up, then all of AE goes up, and then AE might move to AE2. And then now, that's macroeconomic equilibrium, and we'll call that Y2. And I'll make a note of where Y2 is, which is right there. So it's somewhere along that line, right? And then we know if interest rates are 5%, then AE2 is going to be there, so then Y is going to be there. So let's pick a point over here that's 5% and find that, and we know that point is on the IS curve. And then I'll do one more just to give you a couple of data points to look at. So if I equals 15%, well now interest rates are really high, so that's going to hurt investment, and that's going to pull down this stack, okay? And that means that, let me do some black just so I don't confuse the color with the blue. So now AE is going to be really low, and that's going to move to AE3, and here's our point of equilibrium. We'll call that Y3, and then just for reference, I'll put that on there, and that's Y3, and that gives us to that point there, and then if I is up here at 15%, then Y3 is going to be there, and that's that point right there. So we have that point, we have that point, we have that point. We can connect all those points, and we get what's called the investment saving or IS curve, and it's downward sloped. So we've derived the IS curve. All we've done here is manipulated interest rates, which is on this axis, and when we manipulate interest rates, we change investment, which then causes AE to move up and down, which then causes movements along this axis. So the higher interest rates go, the lower the IS curve goes, or the lower real GDP goes. We get that downward slope. This isn't a market for anything. This is just a theoretical construct that shows us all the points between interest and real GDP that satisfy the AE model. That's all we're doing there.